we are going to look at the databases, like I said, just briefly today. I'll have to show you guys a really good free resource that you can use to get started yourself. Um, the current databases will go up to 150 gigs is the, the current maximum size. There's ways that you can work around that to get some additional data up there, but the current uh, maximum size of a database is at 150 gigs. You can connect using the normal tools that you would use on in your everyday SQL Server experience. So just uh, connecting up with SQL Server Management Studio. I'm actually going to show you guys how to connect through SQL Server data tools today using Visual Studio. Um, and it's basically the same exact process. So we'll talk a little bit about that whenever we get into the database side. You now again, all the stuff is managed online. <clears throat> There's a couple of different ways that you can manage this. You can either, um, in addition to just the monitoring of your, your instance, you can go and create tables online or you can create them inside of Management Studio. You can create views online or you can create them in Management Studio. You can run queries both online and in Management Studio. So a lot of the things that you can do um, in your normal SQL environment today using just those familiar tools, you can also do up in the Azure portal as well. The nice thing about Azure in general is there's built-in high availability. So you can, uh, you know, they've got data centers all over the world and, and things, if you choose the options to, you can have geographic uh, redundancy inside of there. You know, they're, they're really built to uh, provide you that seamless experience and allow you to take some of the management uh, responsibilities away from you and they really take care of that high availability for you. And the other thing that's really key about it like I said, is it's easy to manage. So you don't have to worry about uh, a lot of the maintenance pieces that you would normally do inside of your on-prem versions of SQL. So nice, nice tools available for you there. <clears throat> so without talking too much more here, we'll go ahead and we'll take a look. Like I said, we'll log you into that management portal and then we're also going to go over and uh, I'll show you guys the SQL Server databases and we'll get rolling on some of this here today. So I'm going to open up a browser here and go over to my Azure portal here. Um, once you go to windowsazure.com, you can click on the account or go to portal here. We're going to go into the portal. I'm going to log in here with my Windows credentials. And then you'll notice that this whole screen here is in Silverlight. Um, there, so you do have to have some Silverlight plugins installed in order to manage some of this. But the first thing that you notice when you log in is you get a list of all your subscriptions. So I've set up on just a three-month three, three free trial. So if you go out to Azure, you actually get a, a little bit of a free trial to get yourself started. And I've got a trial out there for both the database and the reporting services that we're going to look at today. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll take a look at these databases and then we'll roll into reporting services. So I can either click on my subscription here or if I go over here onto the left hand side I can click on SQL databases and then go into my uh, subscription from this point here. So if I click on my Azure database I get this nifty little welcome screen. So the other thing that you notice I mentioned there were a lot of different services that we have inside of Azure and those are all these different things over here. So we've got our databases, we've got our storage, we've got the reporting services here. And we've got some other mobile mobile services as well as those VMs and you can host websites, all kinds of different stuff. And the nice thing about this too is that all these pieces they all integrate together. So what you'll see here is even though I've I've got a I have two different subscriptions for my reporting services and my database, I can actually use this database inside my reporting services report. Okay, so this is the, the little welcome page here. You can click the, check the box here to make this hide every time that you open it. But there's some good information both on this main page as well as the reporting services main page. So when we come here, we can do things like getting the, the SQL Server data tools, which I'm going to go ahead and launch Visual Studio here and let that load up in the background because we're going to need that here in a minute. Like I said, you can use the, the regular SQL Server Management Studio on this particular machine. We're going we're gonna to take a look at doing this through Visual Studio. Okay. The other thing that we can do here is there's a, some Visual Studio projects. You can download those here. You'll also notice that here's my server name. So this is actually what normally when you would you would go to connect to a SQL server, you would type in you know um, whatever your server name happens to be. So FL SQL. So it's my SQL server that's in Florida would be potentially the the meaning behind that name. Here we're going to need to take this server name and paste that into our server uh, location. So I'll show you where you can get this here as well. So if we go over to our dashboard, <clears throat> if I was to hide that first screen, the dashboard would be the first thing that comes up. 
So on my dashboard here, you'll notice that I've actually got that same server name uh, is right down here in the bottom right. So you don't have to worry about not being able to get back to that. It's always going to be available there for you. Okay. So on this page, we've got some, some different monitoring tools. Um, you'll notice that it, it shows me the number of connections here. I can come over to my monitor tab and get a little bit better information. So I've got some successful connections, fail connections, deadlocks. Um, you know, there's some, some additional monitoring uh, pieces that you can build in by doing this little add metrics down here. Um, but those will all show up here on this main page. And then finally, this little scale tab. Currently, I'm just using the, the little free, on my free trial here, I've just got the one gig uh, web edition. You can go up to five gigs here. If you switch it over to business, then, of course, like I mentioned, you can go up to 150 gigabytes worth of uh, space in that database there. Okay. So I don't need to, to mess with any of my changes or anything there. So the next thing that we're going to do here is click on this Manage button. So I've got my particular database highlighted. And then I'm going to go to Manage. And I'll say that I'm going to include that IP address rule. Okay. And then you'll notice that I get another little screen that pops up here. And then I have to actually log into my database. So this is not my same Windows Live ID or my, my Windows ID that I logged in with. This is a user account that you set up whenever you create the database. So I'm just going to log into here real quick. And then this is the little portal page that comes up whenever you go into the manage. So this is a lot of the, I mentioned that some of the administration can be done from here inside of the management portal, and then some of it can be done inside of data tools. So I can come over here and things like look at my query performance. And I can come over here and I can click on one of these queries, similar to what you would do inside of management studio. I can see all kinds of different statistics about it down here at the bottom. And then I can also click on this query plan and analyze what actually happened inside of my query by looking at this query plan. So you do get a lot of the tools that are available to you inside of Management Studio right here inside of the Azure portal. The other thing that we can do is this design tab down here in the bottom left. If I click on this, you'll notice that I get a list of all my tables. So I can add and remove tables here, much like I would go in into Management Studio and type create table or drop table. 